All right, guys. So it's been a little while since we talked about Chris Chan. Um, people keep sending me this video. This guy's pretty cool. It's called the Chris Chan Conspiracy Iceberg. How deep does it go now? People keep saying, Papa Guy, you should watch the 60 parts documentary on Chris Chan. And all I have to tell you is that like, I am not that much of a loser. I'm not going to sit and watch 60 hours about something that's going to make me sick to my stomach. Okay? So we'll watch this one. Seems pretty comprehensive. That's what I like. So let's get this going. Hi, my name is Gibby and welcome to the Chris Chan Iceberg. I'm sure that you are familiar with iceberg images, but in case you're not familiar with the trend, here's how it works. What is this? Sonic Chew? I know that. I know the Sonic Chew. I don't know any of this other stuff. What's this? Mute Chew? Towards the top, you have things that are generally well known by the public. Things that people know. Things that are just yeah, the sure. tip of the iceberg. And as you go lower and lower, there are things that either less people know or that are a little more disturbing. You, you know how this works. You know how this works. Uh, you're going to require a general oh. understanding of who Christian is in order to understand this because I'm not going to explain it. This is really all just, it's just for fun. It's, it's all for fun. There is already a uh, Christian iceberg that was posted on Reddit, but I didn't like that one very much, so I outsourced making a new one to my Discord, and this okay. is what we all came up with. All right. If you want to see somebody tackle the original, then Dylan Thomas already did it over on his channel, so I highly recommend watching that video as well. Okay. So Sounds starting cool. off, we have Clear Skies. We're going to start with Sonichu. Everyone who knows who Chris Chan is, of course, knows who Sonichu is. It is the electric hedgehog Pokemon <laughs> that he ridiculous. based his comic book series on. It is Chris's OC, his Sonic the Hedgehog OC, who has electric powers, who married Rose Chu, who is based after Amy Rose. Who is she also a Pikachu? Children, wow. And who had unnatural relations on the comic book page. Sonichu is what most people know Chris Chan for. The it's fuck? really the reason that he's famous to begin with. It's because he was spreading his own work online. He wanted to be taken as a serious artist. And instead, people became obsessed with his real life because he kept putting his real life into the comic book. Next up, we have the Quickie. So CWC and the Quickie are Christian's initials, Christian Weston Chandler. Okay. We'll actually get to uh, other things that that first C stands for later. But, so what? the Quickie is Hockey? Quick, Chris's initials. Like poop? Key, like Wiki, Wiki, Wikipedia. So it's the Chris Chan Encyclopedia. It's okay. a website that currently exists, so you can go on it. It has thousands of pages on Chris's life. Basically, people were so interested in the Sonichu comic because of the allure and the mystery behind it that they wanted to learn more about Chris. And as the years passed, people learned more about Chris. Generally, he'll put stuff from his regular life into Sonichu, and it'll be completely... Yeah, I heard about that. To be parsed by the general public. Because yeah, like he'll like put his bullies in there to fucking <laughs> teach him a lesson and he'll kill him or something. It's weird. It references things that only he knows about his life. And it's only later on that we discover what that chapter in the comic is based on. So for a long time, basically since the beginning of his existence on the internet, people wanted to chronicle him, which has led to Christorians. Christorians are the people who write Christory. They catalog it on things like the Quickie. They also catalog it other places, like YouTube, which brings us on to Gino Samuel. Gino Samuel is definitely the most famous Christorian. He has an ongoing documentary series on YouTube with over 50 parts. Yeah. It's called the Comprehensive Chris Chan Not documentary, watch that, and it starts in his early uh, life and goes on and on and on for decades. I... It's actually not over yet, although we are approaching present day, and, not and it's just one vodka. very good resource for learning about Chris's life, and it's something a lot of people find themselves into. People don't want to have to read the quickie, people don't want to have to look through old Kiwi Farms threads, so they go to Geno Samuel. He makes it very digestible for the public. Mm. Next, we have Sonic Sweepstakes. Most people who know about Chris Chan know that when he was a very young kid, he won a sweepstakes to his mall for a uh, Sonic the Hedgehog game. He got $1,000 that he was allowed to spend, and he bought a bunch of Sega games. Yeah, love I knew that quest one. is in reference to Chris's quest to find a lover. Okay. He often called himself a virgin with rage because as an autistic individual, he found it very difficult to find relationships when he was a young man. He still does, but that's, uh, yeah, that's, we'll tell that story later. 
Okay. So Chris's love quest involved things like holding up an attraction sign, which had things on it like, I am an autistic 24-year-old man who is seeking an 18 to my age year old smoke-free white girl to share a future with. And he would just walk around with a sign and it would also say on it that he didn't want to be approached by uh, uh, married men or black men and that he wanted girls to approach him because he was autistic and therefore couldn't approach them. He would go to the local mall and he would uh, have a piece of string with a heart on the end of it and he would throw it at girls and reel it in like a fishing pole. He had, that's something he learned from anime. It's something that's supposed to attract girls to you. What the fuck? Uh, yeah, and uh, it did not go over well. Technically, the love quest is over. Chris did lose his virginity to a prostitute in 2012, I believe. Okay. And he is currently married to fictional characters. Oh, okay. Chris say, just... is currently married to Mewtwo the Pokemon. Yeah, that's that's how that story ends. Okay. All right, next we have Medallion. Not a bad choice. Chris Chan has formed a Sonichu medallion made out of Crayola model magic that he wears around his Larish neck. Member just He's actually had several Thank you for the summer, man. three over the years. The first one he sent off to a troll who he believed to be a girlfriend. And uh, the troll then filmed themselves stabbing it, peeing on it, and setting it on fire. So Chris made a replacement. Wow, that's fucked up. His medallion broke Jesus relatively Christ. recently, so he actually went to the store to uh, get it fixed, and that's how he met another group of trolls who currently want him to taser himself. So that's fun. Basically, the medallion is just something that he wears, that he always wears, and that signifies that he is, in fact, the real Chris Chan. And last in this part, we have Quickville. Again, in, case you, in case you just couldn't tell who the real Chris Chan was. CWC are Chris's initials, and Quickville is the town that he is the mayor of the fictional town in the Sonichu comics. At okay. uh, one point or another, Quickville has been kind of a small led town. by a fictional character named Amber, who was originally Chris's assistant, and it's also been led by Billy Mays and Brendan Fraser. So yeah, it's great. Brendan Fraser's Moving pretty good. Moving on now to the tip of the iceberg. Okay. These are things that almost everybody who knows who Chris Chan is knows about, but they might not know that it's specifically to Chris that this refers to. So for instance, Blorms, they might know that somebody got really upset of the uh, the change in Sonic the Hedgehog's arm color and that they maced a GameStop employee, but they oh. might not know that that was Chris Chan. Okay, that's uh, yeah, why that, they did that it? That did happen. He was arrested. What a fucking weirdo, dude. What the Blue hell? Arms. He has a whole Facebook group about how he wants to change the color of Sonic's arms back. They used to be flesh-colored or tan-colored, and uh, they changed it to blue for Sonic Boom. And he rallied against that really Why? hard. <laughs> Fake Why? girlfriends refers to what I was talking about earlier with the medallion, where Chris would very, very often go on dates with girls or have internet relationships with girls who were actually trolls. One yeah. of them convinced him to mail her his medallion, which I've already talked about. What I find interesting is the fucking shirt. Why Why is this such a... Like this, this kid could draw himself as whatever he wanted, and he drew him as a kid waving around a dumb shirt. Uh, one of them convinced him to do blackface. Wow. That, that's great. That's something. And most of the time, Holy they just fuck. want him to make new Sonichu comics Jesus or Christ. to make videos and post them on YouTube. A couple of them have leaked sex tapes of him, which is not good. And one of them, who is a 14-year-old boy, got him to shove his Sanju medallion up his butt. That's, it's great. Wow. But he never learned. He literally he never learned. Patty is the name of Chris's childhood dog. I wonder why that is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he got trolled so many times. Or she, whatever the fucking pronouns you want to use. I don't care. They got trolled so many times. But they never stopped. Like, they continuously got trolled. I think that that's just a lack of understanding type of a thing. I mean, it's autistic, so who tragically died when he was in his early 20s. That's and sad. he wrote her into his Sonichu comics. Okay. He has a couple pages devoted to her turning into an anthropomorphic dog, going through a portal in his bedroom, and winding up in Quickville. I don't think that that's that weird. You know, people are like, oh my god, that's so weird. I feel like that's like a coping mechanism. Of all the things to criticize this guy for, I don't think this is the thing. This was the beginning of Chris Be careful, you're going to go down deep hole. cope with death, which on. is one of the reasons why it's so significant in the story. They can't be life. that much worse than this. When his father died, he also wrote into the Sonichu comics that his father was alive and well in Quickville because his father okay. is half Sonichu. So that's also not good. Okay. So many things on this are not good. Christian's life is not good. That's Liquid true. Chris is a reference to a troll who started out not actually wanting to troll Chris. He just did a very good Chris Chan impression and uploaded videos of him doing that impression on YouTube. People thought he was so good that he might be a clone of Chris, or 
Chris might be a clone of him. And so we got Luke. Oh Chris my god. I could just assume the fucking drama from Chris's or Christine's perspective. <laughs> it's just like you have somebody who's pretending to be you, and then you probably have trolls saying, like, this probably this person seemed to be doing it in a nice way, from what I'm hearing. And then the trolls probably like, Chris, this person, is this person really you? Is this and they're trying to like egg Chris on. To get them to get like uh, really upset and go like, oh, oh, stop. And then like it turns into like a trolling scenario. Oh, this is fucked up. It's Chris, which is a that that sounds like is that the reason why he wears a medallion to make sure that people know it's the real Chris? <laughs> it's terrible. Your solid series. Chris did not like that Liquid was stealing his identity. Insert Dwight Jim meme. Eventually, Liquid rode off into the sunset, having successfully trolled Chris for a fairly large amount of time. Mary Lee Walsh was the dean of students at the community college that Chris Chan went to. He was called into her office because of his attraction sign and told that soliciting sex on campus was not allowed. She tore up his attraction sign, so he did a Kershye Hameha at her, like the Kamehameha from Dragon Ball Z, and uh, Chris believes that that magical attack will curse somebody with bad luck. Ooh. Okay. This is what happens when you like mix autism with like older parents that don't really take care of their kids and anime. Chris had to undergo mandatory therapy after that if he wanted to return to college. So, yeah, I don't yeah. blame him for. Chris didn't like her very that. much, and so he wrote her as the main villain in Sonichu. I mean, she's got big fat fucking tits, so I guess Chris might have liked her a little more. I mean, she looks better in the kind of the comic than in real life. As this evil witch who he later renamed Slawil Ryam, which is Mary Lee Walsh backwards, kind of. And uh, she, she wants to use her jerk ops, which are jerk cops, to make sure that nobody can fall in love, because that's not what, jerking off. what Chris thinks he was the victim of when he was at school. Victim and of a hate finally, crime. we have Asper Chew. So Chris, as I said earlier, has autism, and he strongly dislikes Asperger's, and that's because he believes that Asperger's takes away from autism awareness and... The sympathy and stuff like that. He just does not like it. What? It's all blanketed now, mostly for insurance reasons, like Obama did that. But like Asper, why did he not like Asper? What? It's not that he dislikes the disease. He dislikes people who have the disease. So uh, some guy Is it named a disease? Alec Vincent Leary wrote mm. a parody of Sonic Chew called Asper Chew, where the main characters have Asperger's. And Chris is in a comic, and he's not oh depicted in a very good light. And so Chris very much does not like that comic. Oh my god! And he this rallied against the comic. So terrible! I'm laughing about this. He kills Alec Benson Leary and frees all of the Sonic Jews from his comic. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was a bit of a power fantasy, but I don't know. Jesus. To this day, he still says that Asper Chew isn't canon, and that none of it matters. It wasn't real, even though he wrote it into his own story. It's, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, oh, next we man. have Just Below the Surface. Okay. This is things that if you know who Chris Chen is, you just might not know about these things. So we have the man in the pickle suit. <laughs> what is Going the... back to what I said earlier. Oh, he doesn't like pickles or she, whatever. They don't like pickles, right? Emily. She was a troll who invited Chris on a date to his mall. He actually invited his father along on the date, and they were eating, and his father did most of the talking. And afterwards, Chris and Emily were walking around the mall talking. He kept trying to hold her hand, and she had to, like... What the fuck? I mean, like, I know this person has um, autism, but you took your fucking father on the date? What the hell are you doing, dog? You know, shove him away because that's creepy, and she didn't want that. Also, she's a troll, so she didn't want to hold his hand. Well, I mean, like, you can't blame him for wanting to hold her hand and then, and then like, put the framing of, like, yeah, it's creepy. But it's like she was there under the pretenses of wanting to date Christian and then wouldn't hold his hand because she was just being an asshole and trolling him. So it's her fault that it's not really that it's creepy inherently. It's just, she was being dishonest. Anyway, they round a corner and standing in front of them is a man wearing a pickle suit. And Chris Chan does not like pickles because Chris Chan is so straight, you guys, that he doesn't like anything that is remotely phallic shaped. So he hates pickles. But he shoved his medallion up his butt. Okay. And so the or man in the whatever. pickle suit comes up and steals Emily away from him. The whole thing was a plot done by Emily and her friends to embarrass Chris in public because she was a troll and the man in the pickle suit was a troll. That's just a very commonly known story about Chris, but maybe not everybody who knows him knows what it is. House fire refers to Chris's house catching on fire. Okay. Uh, he left an appliance plugged into his bathroom. There was faulty wiring and the house caught on fire. Uh, he was unharmed. His family was unharmed. His pets were unharmed, but it did a lot of damage to his belongings. 
and they had to live somewhere else for a while while the house was rebuilt. That Christopher sucks. is a reference to Chris's birth name. He was not born Christian Weston Chandler. Oh, they were uh, blackmailed. Weston okay. Chandler. Apparently, his father wanted to name him Christian, but cowered it out. I don't know why that would make any sort of sense. Anyway, uh, Chris was like eight years old, and he goes to his local mall, and there's this uh, animatronic bear. So Chris goes up to the bear, and he says that his name is Christopher, and the guy operating the bear mishears and calls him Christian. And so Chris and his father take this as a sign from God that his birth name should have been Christian, and so they change it. Chris then believed that that bear was some sort of deity oh, God. and called it God Bear. Blue Spike. It Dude, the fucking fact that, according to this guy, the dad like affirmed it is so weird. So the dad heard an animatronic bear call his son Christian, even though the kid's name was Christopher, and he's like, this has got to be God. It couldn't be just the lack of ability of hearing. What? He is a reference to the troll I mentioned earlier who made Chris shove the Sancho medallion up his butt. He right. pretended to be a girlfriend for Chris. They were in love for a very long time. Uh, he also pretended to be the girlfriend's brother who was evil and kidnapped her. And uh, he did not put on different fuck? voices for the two. He would either just talk to Chris uh, on voice calls with a slightly higher pitch voice. And that was the girlfriend or he would talk in his normal voice. And that was him, the younger brother. Uh, so he was talking to Chris in a call and then he divulged that Chris had been having phone sex with a 14-year-old boy, and he was going to send the footage into Chris Hansen. And, uh, yeah, no nobody likes Blue Spike. Blue Spike is considered one of the worst Christian trolls, especially from the early years. Although I mean, that's shitty. I mean, uh, you have a 14-year-old who, like, obviously is taking advantage of an autistic person and weaponizing pedophilia to make them look as bad as possible. You know, I mean, like, you know, obviously you say, like, yeah, Christian needs to be more responsible, but you have, like, a fucking however old autistic person that's clearly socially crippled. And then you're trying to, you know, you're trying to troll him that much and then trying to get him trouble with Chris Hansen. Come on. Although I think that there are worse people who come up later. Fanta or Fanta, depending on how you pronounce it, by which I mean if you're correct or not. Drink? <laughs> uh, is a reference to what Chris Chan would do with said Fanta, which oh. is that. Oh, he I know this one. He would come in it and drink it, right? Believed that uh, men only had a certain amount of sperm in their body and that eventually they could run out and thus not be able to father children. And so he thought that if he released that sperm, he would lose it. And uh, if he thought that if he didn't release the sperm, that it would dissolve and be lost, which kind of happens. It's just that it you, you can still make more. Uh, so he would release it into a cup of Fanta and then re-drink it. Bro, how far down this fucking iceberg are we? We're almost at the bottom, right? So that he wouldn't lose any. And he called this recycling. <laughs> and uh, this was featured Who on convinced multiple him to do this? shows. Or her, or whatever. About this, and this definitely led to more people being aware of Chris Chan. And it's all what? They did this on radio shows? How are there like five instances so far? Of Christian being on like the media, like oh Christian was like uh, won a Sonic thing. This Christian drinks their own cum, and it's what the fuck was on Howard Stern? Like what's happening? Also disgusting. So that's why it's on the list. Uh, first Let's Player. People will often cite Chris as being the first Let's Player, although that's not technically true. What is a Let's uh, Player? In the early 2000s, oh, like, he play sent in a video balls, of himself yeah. playing Animal Crossing on the GameCube to Nintendo Power, and they published an article about <laughs> what? it. What? Why? The first Let's Player. I don't know. It's really hard to nail down. How? Really how? Really how is this person people so people famous? Were forums in the early internet, and in the 90s, there were even like local cable access shows where people would play video games. So. No, Chris was not the first Let's Player, but that's a phrase that's very often associated with him. Uh, Jacob Sockness is actually not a troll. He is somebody who is unironically in love with Chris Chan. What? He is a gay autistic man from San Francisco, California. And I thought that was Chris Chan. Okay. And he is in love with Chris. He's okay. also completely insane. He believes in the occult. He thinks that he is a star child. He thinks that he's the son of an alien emperor. I mean, it sounds like a good match for Chris. He believes that Dean. our planet is going to be wiped out by the war god, Jacoba. Probably. The only Jacoba? It's just Jacob with an A. <laughs> what the fuck? Him and Chris unite their powers. Jacob was able to uh, convince Chris that he needs him in order to stop this evil war god. And Jacob tried to convince Chris that they had to have sex in order to do this. Wow. Jacob's That's predatory. Insane. That's why he's on the list. All right, so even lower. 
Wait, where were we? Oh, wow. We were just below the surface. Fantastic. This, this is not on the good. Iceberg, we now have captain's logs. So uh, Chris Chan used to put videos on YouTube that he called captain's logs, which is a reference to Star Trek or more likely a reference to oh, family guy referencing Star Trek. So this is Dick stuff that Chris wall? would purposefully put out there in the world. So if Dude, you follow Chris Chan, fuck? you almost certainly know these things because Chris is open about them. So you have P-Mert. Uh, Chris, for whatever reasons, definitely from some TV show he watched or something, uh, he believes that saying someone's name backwards will take power away from them. Uh, and one of Chris's least favorite people on the planet is Donald Trump. So he will always refer to Trump as P-Mert, which is Trump backwards. I guess that's why Trump lost the election. Christian uh, cursed him with the curse maya maya or whatever the fuck it's called. Sony letter is in reference to uh, a competition that Chris was in. Uh, okay. It was for Parappa the Rapper, where he had to do a cover of one of the songs from the video game. Okay. And the winner of the contest would be flown out to Sony America's headquarters and would okay. be given to PlayStation Portables. And Chris lost the contest. Now, Chris really, really wanted to win because he wanted to invite one of his female platonic friends, whose name is Megan, along with him. Yeah. Uh, they would stay together at the hotel, go on the show. Oh, he's wearing the fucking necklace there. She looks so uninterested. Trip together, and he would give her one of the PSPs, uh, and then he believed that she would have sex with him. God, I was like, oh, maybe he's a nice guy. He just wanted to fuck his friend. Probably the friend with him. This person was probably friends with Chris, even though no one else wanted to be. And you're trying to fuck her. By paying, uh, giving her a PSP. And he wrote that in his complaint letter to Sony. He wrote a letter to Sony wow. and said, I can't believe that you made me lose this contest. You didn't pick my entry. Uh, now I'm never going to have sex with Megan. What? Yeah. Uh, so, Christine. So, we all what know the that fuck? Chris was born Christopher Weston Chandler. <sighs> yeah. Changed to Christian Weston Chandler. Yep. Uh, he actually changed that one more time. He is now a she, and her name is Christine Weston Chandler. Okay. In the early 2010s, Chris came out as transgender and now prefers the female pronoun and the name Christine. For various reasons, I don't refer to him as Christine or use female pronouns, but I respect that he wants to be called that, and there are a lot of people who do call him by those names. The idea, guys, were a group of trolls. Mostly yeah, a lot of people get caught up on the pronouns in both sides. Like, they'll be like, oh, you're supposed to call them she, or oh, you're supposed to call them he. Like, just, like, call them whatever you want. Who cares? You got this point. Did, you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? Who cares? One troll named Joshua Wise, who made Chris even more delusional than he is. That doesn't make any sense. Basically, they convinced Chris that there is a uh, parallel dimension okay. named uh, Dimension C197, where Sonichu actually takes place in. It's kind of like, imagine, uh, multiverse theory, like in Rick and Morty. That's where Chris got the idea from. From uh, Rick and so Morty or the idea from guys else? convinced Chris that it was under attack that they themselves had music is very fictional ominous. versions of themselves who lived in the Sonichu dimension so they could see what was going on there and they would extort money from Chris to protect that dimension. Uh, they stole a lot of money from Chris. They had him do Jesus. and say things like they had him slap his mother across the face. Jesus uh, and Christ. And himself doing it. Uh, what the fuck? How? Him on video How did they get him to do that? that? He was a pedophile and they she, threatened whatever. to release it. And uh, if he didn't give them money, they were just very, very bad people. And they okay. convinced Chris that this other universe existed. They convinced Chris that he was a goddess. Uh, and theoretically, they also might have convinced Chris to become bisexual. Although it's unclear if that was just something that he was hiding from himself deep down all along. But he did come out during the time when they had influence over him and say that he was bisexual. So okay. sometimes that's attributed to them. They were thankfully knocked out of power by a group of people on the Kiwi Farms who didn't want Chris to be extorted, so the Kiwi Farms ended up being the good guys. All right, cool. Yeah. Unclit refers to oh, uh, no. Chris wanting to be more of a woman, so he actually pierced his taint. Uh, he would listen to meditation music, which he believed would change his internal organs and make him a real woman. And he also used a knife and cut open his taint to make a vagina. It didn't work. There, there are pictures. No. No.
My chat's saying, Papa, don't do this. But I feel like I have to find out what it looks like. I feel like I have to look. I feel like, uh... The page didn't load. I'm gonna take that as I'm gonna take that as a as a godsend. It's bad. Okay. The Teen Truant Squad are a group of I don't know trolls, friends, believers. Who knows? I don't think uh, they're gonna show on this video. Who went along with what Chris was saying and uh, tried to also extort money out of him, kind of like the idea guys. They uh, bought some artwork from Chris, which got them in his good graces. He liked them because they were giving him money, and so we started hanging out with them. And so they okay. then videotaped him doing crazy things, like making out with Mewtwo, his husband, the Pokemon. It wasn't actually Mewtwo, it was Chriselle, but that doesn't matter to this story, and I haven't told you who Chriselle is yet. They were also doxxed by the Kiwi Farms and thus driven out of power, but they were influencing Chris for a long time, and they were bad people. Sega Letter. Much like the Sony letter, Chris wrote a letter to Sega, and he was very mad at them for changing the color of Sonic's blarms. Uh, and he put a he put glitter in it. it. It was a glitter bomb, and he said that they would like rue the day that they ever changed Sonic's arms. But the glitter didn't explode anywhere because he didn't do it right. So yeah, that was just part of the Blarm saga. Okay. All right, privated Twitter. So again, now Dude, that they, how much further does this go down? What the fuck? This is things that Chris would like openly talk about, but he doesn't want everybody to know. It may, maybe it's things that he's a little uh, re regretful of, or it's things that not everybody knows. We're getting towards the bottom of the iceberg now. Okay. Tara Strong threats. Uh, so Tara Strong is a voice actress. She is most famous for voicing uh, Harley Quinn, Timmy Turner, Twilight okay. Sparkle, Raven from... Uh, I'm surprised Titans, it wasn't Sonic. Bubbles from the Powerpuff Girls. She's a, she's a very prolific voice actress. Okay. And uh, she put out a <clears throat> video about trolling. And uh, Chris said that she didn't know what real trolling was, and he kind of like was mad at her for it because he's been the victim of real trolling. That's true. And so she <laughs> then responded to him. What? Why does pe Why do people respond to Christian? Uh, saying that he was self-absorbed, and uh, that was extremely funny because the, this person that Chris looks up to kind of insulted him. So, yeah, yeah, that's what that's, that's about. Sad, uh, bro. Cole Smithy is Chris Chan's half brother. Both of his parents had previous marriages and had kids from previous marriages. Cole Smithy is okay. his mother's son. Uh, he went on to become a famous or infamous film reviewer. He is okay. uh, most widely known as being the person who gave Toy Story 3 a negative review on Rotten Tomatoes, thus dropping its score from a perfect 100. Yeah, people people don't like him. I mean, I don't know if Toy Story 3 was that good. It's kind of like, <clears throat> but I don't remember watching and Chris it for will a while. Often, so. uh, write letters to him and send messages saying, please come and take care of mom. I can't do this because... I don't want to. Tom Girl. He probably can't take care. I mean, obviously he can't because he sexually assaulted his mother. So, well, uh, so a, a tomboy is a girl who acts like a stereotypical boy. So a Tom Girl is a gr boy who acts like a stereotypical girl. Uh, before Chris came out as okay. trans, he just considered himself a Tom Girl. It, yep. Sonic Boom references. So that means that there were two, mm, maybe, uh, times in the Sonic Boom. You never, I never thought about Chris Chan having like a, a sibling. That makes it weird, you know? Boom cartoon that they referenced Chris Chan. There's definitely one, possibly two. Uh, so the definite one is that they're playing an old retro video game and Sonic comments that they never should have changed the color of the mascot's legs. Look what I found at the flea market! Dude, is that Tomato Potamus 2? That's the best one in the entire series! Tomato Potamus never worked in 3D. Game companies always ruin their beloved franchises. And they never should have changed the color of Tomato Potamus' legs. Obvious reference to Chris Chan and him not wanting to change the color of Sonic's arms. What the fuck? How is Chris Chan so, like, influential where they're getting into the fucking Sonic comic references? What the fuck? It's like the red shirt guy in World of Warcraft. The other is that there's an entire episode of Sonic Boom where a character uh, kidnaps Sonic and they reenact misery, and the character kind of looks like Chris. And so the idea is that this one, you know, super fan, I don't know if it looks like Chris. Sonic, even though he's an amalgamation of all Sonic fans who are crazy, is definitely a reference to Chris Chan specifically. Although the creators well, have denied maybe. that last. I one. mean, like, I mean, Shrek that's retold, a stretch. Uh, there's a video like. on YouTube. It's a retelling of Shrek. They get a different creator to jump in. It's either every six seconds or every ten seconds. I don't remember. And they uh, they remake the movie 10 seconds at a time and so 10 seconds of it were covered by chris chan he just did some drawings she came for quick Great. uh so uh megan who is chris's platonic friend uh chris did not want to be platonic with her i think right. i talked about that with the sure. psp sony incident 
Uh, Chris drew an image that he called She Came For Quick, uh, in which he engaged in a sexual activity with her involving his hands. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, I saw at that. At one point, he was being accused, because, again, he's extremely homophobic, of being gay, and so in order to disprove that, he uploaded this drawing that he did of himself. Well, he seems to have very religious parents, so it's probably why he's incredibly homophobic, or she's incredibly homophobic. Elf and Megan onto the internet, and that was supposed to prove that he was straight, and yeah. Megan found it, and she did not like it. Yeah. And that's what ended their friendship. I don't blame her. Cut this up into a bunch of pieces, uh, put it in a bag, and ended up selling it to the Teen Troon Squad. That's actually how he met them. Uh, Megan. But I also heard that apparently he told the justifier for that was is like if he didn't do that now, the like feelings would have built up and caused him to like have to force it out or something like that. It was very weird and like almost threatening of sexual assault onto this girl. Megan is a Nazi, uh, so Megan apparently has a couple times in leaked emails said that she thinks that. Uh, historical photos of German soldiers are cute. Uh, she also would get Chris, who had disposable income because he <sighs> didn't have any bills. The same Megan we were just talking about? Uh, she would get him to buy her things, including Nazi memorabilia. Uh, I don't think many people think that Megan is actually a Nazi, but there are some disturbing things that we have evidence of her saying. Okay, that is weird. I will say, I remember watching a video a while back of... Um, a guy going over how stylish Nazis were and like how stylish the uniforms were from like a pure fashion sense. It was a very interesting video. So maybe she was just drawn to that. I don't know. All right. The next layer is secret discourse. Now wow, there's still more shit. Chris doesn't really talk about or that's just more secretive. Dude, than the what last the fuck layer. is a dick licking, dick licking wall? wall. <laughs> Bro, what the fuck? Uh, Chris drew. <laughs> so Chris is not only married to. Mewtwo, the Pokemon. He is also married to Magichan, who is one of his Sonichus. Okay. Uh, he is married to Silvana, who is Magichan's wife. So I guess she just kind of came as part of a package deal. And Krizel, who I will again talk about later. Uh, so Chris drew an image of Magichan's penis on his wall in his bedroom. Great. And licked it in a in a video, and oh, then okay. his mother saw it and she was very upset. So that's that's what that is. Wait, but why the fuck does Chris have a LGBTQ thing on their wall? I guess they were trans at this point. Sylvana's secretions. Okay, so uh, Sonichu issue number eight is extremely sexual. It literally opens with Chris kind of parodying a nature documentary, talking about how Sonichus and Rosechus meet. It's great. There's a lot okay. of bad stuff in there uh, in the unedited version. Yeah, we all have a, a wiener licking wall. I feel like this is a little bit of a slanderous piece. Chris accidentally has child porn in the issue. So, what? fantastic. Um, Silvana was a villain before turning good and marrying Magichan. And her uh, vaginal secretions have paralysis powers. And so if she seduces somebody, then she can paralyze them. And that happens oh. in the comic. Okay. Uh, crystals and aura. Chris believes... So that's supposed to be like Sylvanas Windrunner from World of Warcraft? It's not only in the uh, other dimensional merge being real. He thinks that all these fictional characters are real in the other dimension and magic. He thinks he's a goddess, whatever. He also believes in more uh, normal, I guess, Wiccan stuff. Like uh, crystals have magic powers and living beings have auras that he can see and astral projection and things Sylvanas like that. Sylvanas is a bad idea. So yeah. he, he, has a, he has a bunch of crystals embedded on the underside of his Sanchu medallion. Uh, he has a bottle of water that he has a quartz crystal inside of and he thinks that that powers up his water and makes him more healthy i don't know he a lot of women think this so you can't give him too much of shit for that he, he just believes a lot of steven that. universe that's weirdos that. think that this is true female ricardo so when chris was in high school he took a spanish class and as one is to do in a spanish class he was given a spanish name and that name was ricardo uh but okay. as one is not to do after Spanish class, when he graduated, when he was in college, and now in his adult life, he will still refer to himself as Ricardo. So he oh, called that's... himself Christian Weston Ricardo Chandler. Oh, whatever. And despite the fact that he now uses female pronouns and legally changed his name to Christine, he has not changed either of his middle names. So he's still Christine Weston Ricardo Chandler. I mean, it's a nickname. I feel like that's not that big of a deal. So... That this is just referencing the fact that he still goes by the male name. Is this the leader Christorian? Like Probably, yeah. Psychic headaches. Uh, Chris gets a lot of headaches. People have theorized this might be because of his extremely poor diet. He's very overweight. Or maybe it's because he drinks fucking rock water. Could be a factor. 
Uh, he just not active. It's possible it's a side effect of medicine that he's on, uh, but he gets a lot of migraines and headaches. Uh, he thinks that these are psychic messages or that it's uh, a buildup of psychic power within his body, and so he doesn't think it's a problem. He actually sometimes brags about getting heart attacks and feeling electricity through his body. Wow. Which is bad. Me too, I guess. Me too. Because he's crazy. Uh, digress is a meme within... Uh, not not even just the Christian community. It's specifically my community on YouTube. Uh, Chris uses the phrase, but I digress, or just the word digress a lot in his tweets. Uh, he has a very strange way of talking and writing. He uses a lot of unnecessary punctuation and commas and run-on sentences and all that fun stuff. And so he also wants to f come off as professional. He kind of writes in a, I don't know, a better term for it than biblical manner. He wants to sound very official. So he uses a lot of big words that he doesn't know how to use. Uh, so very often he will go off on tangents and then come back to his main point and say, but I digress. So much so that on my channel, it has become a drinking game where my viewers will take a shot whenever Chris says digress. And then finally, Krizel. Wow. Uh, so Krizel is a rose chew and is one of Chris's wives. Uh, she was created specifically by the Idea Guys in their attempt to troll Chris. Very hairy tits. Uh, she is underage. I think she's 16. Right. And they only created her and had Chris marry her in order to then use that as blackmail to prove that Chris was a pedophile. But Chris never understood this, and so the blackmail didn't go anywhere. And then the idea guys were knocked out of power. So they <laughs> Wait, what? So they created this character to be 16 years old, to have Chris marry the character in their comic book, and then try to blackmail them by saying that they married a 16-year-old in a comic book. Jesus. It doesn't really matter. This is so ridiculous. now you just have this random uh, Sonichu OC that Chris didn't even make who is one of his wives that's still in the story even though it was created by the idea guys as a troll and blackmail. So, Sounds yeah, about right. She's dumb. Okay, we are now in the depths. These are things that a lot of people don't know. Ooh, spooky. We have stamp collection. So Chris's okay. father, Bob, collected a lot of things. He collected records because he used to be a DJ. Not not, not like a club DJ, like like on a radio station. Like oh. He just played the next song. Okay, I, thought, I was like, Jesus, what a fucking eccentric family. And he also collected a lot of stamps. And when he died, he left his stuff to Chris. Uh, there's actually a letter we have from Chris's father to Chris where he says that he hopes one day Chris appreciates all the stuff he left him and all the collections he built and all this music from around the world. Uh, and then Chris sold his stamp collection for $80 and then bought $90 worth of video games. So, Wow, that is pretty shitty. That's what he thinks of his father's legacy. Tales Gets Trolled is a... Uh, I'm assuming somebody trolled them into buying it. It's like, oh, I'll give you 80 bucks for the whole stamp collection just for like for the meme. I'm, I guarantee you somebody did that. Uh, web comic that is a parody of Sonic the Hedgehog and, you know, Tales is the main... I'm so mad I'm going to have sex with my girlfriend, so I won't be mad. Okay. Character. It is very similar to Sonic 2 in that it is poorly drawn. There's a lot of typos in it. It's a poorly told story. It takes in a lot of other third-party characters. It has, like, the Looney Tunes in it. Uh, and at one point, Sonic 2 shows up. I put it up on eBay? Uh, it's very likely that it is a parody not only of web comics, but of Sonic 2 in particular, keeping in mind that Sonic 2 is one of the most famous web comics. Uh, but Why? But like the characters getting needlessly violent as it goes on. Like, it starts all nice and friendly, but then they get violent. Uh, they start having curses. They start uh, having sex. They start smoking weed. What the fuck? Banana. Okay. All these things that happened in the... Oh, so no. Chris sold them immediately. Even laughed at the father's letter and said, I hope you make Sonic you popular and a symbol of autism empowerment. There's no way he said that, bro. Did he actually say that? She, it, whatever. What? What the fuck? Banana. The Sonic Ju comics later happened in Tales Gets Trolled, as if it was directly parodying Sonic Ju. Quickville Ovens. So, uh, once again, when the Idea Guys were in power, they convinced Chris to make a camp in Quickville to hold people in, and that camp included large ovens. And Chris did not realize that this was a reference to the Holocaust, and that of he was not. making his, his hero characters Hitler. Uh, S&T versus Sonic... Bro, they trolled him into making Hitler a hero. This is ridiculous. I choose a fan fiction. It's about uh, SNT, who is the Sonic OC of a YouTuber named Courtney, and she fights against Sonic who is the Sonic OC of Chris Chan. That's basically it. 
Uh, okay. Chris really does not like this fan fiction because it paints him in a bad light. And so he actually wrote his own fan fiction of the fan fiction to give it a better and more correct ending. Okay. And so that's why, yeah, he, it just makes him mad. Uh, Riddle. Uh, Riddle is in reference to a riddle that Chris posted on Facebook that makes absolutely no sense and is impossible to follow. Uh, he wanted his friends to like figure it out and nobody could. Because again, it makes no sense and is impossible to follow. I will try to do my best. Did he ever explain the riddle? What riddle is that? What is this guy's name? Mark fucking something. Then there's Bree. Bird. I don't even know. All right, so this is a Mark Cuban. Bree Cheese. A fucking picture of the riddle. Uh, so, you know, question mark, Mark Cuban, pie. The I thought that was Brie Cheese. Oh, maybe it is pie. Okay. University of Delaware fighting Blue Hens mascot, a Blu-ray of the movie Twister, some woman from India, the Sphinx, the Great Wall of China, Smurfette, a boat, <laughs> and then question mark. So you're supposed to solve for question mark. And uh, Chris, Chris thought that people would be able to do this. And uh, he, here is the solution. Okay, so uh, to, make, to have this make sense, we're actually going to start with the cake. Okay, so it's a lemon almond cake. And uh, th there's a bakery in Delaware that recommends lemons and almond cookies. Uh, so Delaware gets you to uh, the University of Delaware and the blue hens. Uh, hens live on a farm, and there are farms in Kansas. And in The Wizard of Oz, there's a tornado, which is also a twister. Okay. Uh, twister is on Blu-ray. And uh, you know what else is blue? Water. And uh, water makes ice. And ice goes into drinks that are served at restaurants. And there are some restaurants in India that serve soy and vegetable foods. And um, people in India worship cows. And people in Wh India who are women wear these kind of clothings. What and, the fuck? Uh, people in India are kind of the same color as people in Africa. What are the dots supposed to mean? And uh, Egypt is in Africa. Okay. And that's where the Sphinx is. Right. I'm following you 100% um, so far. You might think that to get from the Sphinx to the Great Wall of China would just be like, oh, here's the man-made wonders of the world. Nope. Uh, the Sphinx is half human and half lion. And lions are cats. There are cat coffee shops in Japan. And okay. um, Japan is kind of like China. And China has the Great Wall. Okay. How the fuck do you get from China uh, to Smurfette? The Great Wall of China is made of stones and rocks. And rocks is kind of like lava. It's just solid lava, right? And uh, Maybe. And therefore lava is liquid fire, but not really. And fire burns down trees, which are made of logs. And there are log throwing competitions in Scotland. And Scottish people wear kilts. And uh, Smurfette. There's wears no a dress, way this is actually which real. Is like a kilt. What kind the of. fuck? Uh, and then you get from Smurfette to uh, this ship, which specifically could be like there's mushrooms in China, and Smurfs live in mushrooms. You know what I mean? The Mayflower, because of Scotland, and then England, and then they, they took the Mayflower. Uh, so, so then, um, how, what's the question mark and how do you get to Mark Cuban? Well, Mark Cuban was born in Pittsburgh and the Pittsburgh are known for the baseball team, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Okay. So, uh, th with the ship and the Mark Cuban, the, the question mark, the answer to this riddle is the Pittsburgh Pirates. Kill me. I don't know how I could be so foolish as to not understand that off the, off the bat. That's not a joke. It's the best riddle ever. All right, dimensional merge. Uh, so I already told you that Chris believes in another dimension where Sonichu lives called Dimension C197. I believe that as he well. He also believes that our dimension is Dimension 1218. He stole that naming convention from Marvel. Uh, he thinks that our two dimensions are sister dimensions, and we're going to cross over, and we're going to live on one big Earth with all the fictional characters. Okay. And he believes that he has access to this because all people who write fiction have access to this other dimension. That's where they get their ideas for fictional stories from. But he has the best access because he's a goddess. And so the dimensional merge True. is going to happen, and he's going to get Sonichu's superpowers, and he's a goddess. Uh, a Girl Who Brought Down the World is a book that somebody wrote. It's about how uh, somebody who acts like Chris uh, got into power. They became, like, king of the world, queen of the world, I guess. Okay. okay. And uh, it, it was bad. And so they sent it to Chris to try to tell Chris that what his actions were were bad and that he should not want to get his way because he's not good with power. And uh, Chris read the first couple chapters, compared the main character to Donald Trump, not understanding the irony of himself hating Donald Trump, and then never finished it. Okay. And that's it. 
All right, hidden depths. Now we have mystery doctor. So Chris what the released fuck? a video of a mystery person wearing a mask and a lab coat reading a poem that Chris himself wrote. In the video, this person was supposed to be Chris's son from the future. Chris believes that he will have two children when okay. he grows up, and the poem makes no sense, and nobody knows who's in the video. So he's the mystery doctor. Okay. Sonic 2 Possession is a reference to two times that Chris actually got possessed by his fictional characters. The first was Magichan possessing his body for a couple of weeks, and the second is Sonic 2 possessing his body. Sonic 2 began possessing Chris's body in early 2020 after the COVID quarantine began. And as of the recording of this video, he is still being possessed by Sonichu. Okay. So the day after I recorded this, Chris actually returned to his own body after almost a year of being possessed by Sonichu, so this is no longer the case. <laughs> so everything that Chris tweets, everything he says on video, everything that he does, he is theoretically actually being done by Sonichu. Imagine, the real imagine all this is real. His soul is in C197 getting magical goddess work done, and his body is just being looked over by Sonichu. So he will refer to himself in the third person, and he also prays to himself. So that's great. Uh, Jessica Quinn Very is the cool. only real girlfriend that Chris has ever had. Granted, it really? was a girlfriend that he had over Facebook. Oh, she is hey, not a know, troll. It's, it's figures she can't Chris. be choosers. She has a fat fetish. Uh, she got a okay. fat fetish chapter written into Sonichu because she told Chris to do it. Uh, and they broke up because Chris was using a sock puppet account on Twitter to hit on voice actresses that he liked. Okay. The, the, the relationship was just doomed from the start. Every copy of Sonic 2 is personalized. That's a reference. Every iceberg meme has uh, every copy of blank is personalized. It's a meme. So it goes back to the first image, which was uh, of Super Mario 64, which is the first big one that got popular. Okay. Uh, technically, it is true. Whenever Chris prints off a copy of Sonic 2 and mails it to people, he will always sign it. So, yes, every copy of Sonic 2 is personalized because Chris has his signature on it. Okay. Rose Chew's penis. Okay, so... Uh, I, I I was Rose I was Chew. I was sitting here and I was like I can't uh, Rose wait, uh, Rose Chew's penis what the fuck and all the other Sonic Chews are in Chris's mind actually Pokemon he actually gave them Pokedex numbers in the early games and in the anime of sense. Pokemon uh, there were not gender differences between Pokemon so the males and females look the same that was until True. Generation Four when they gave well, some Pokemon gender differences uh, one of those Pokemon is Raichu a female Raichu will have a heart at the tip of their tail. Okay. That's actually not true. Pikachu have hearts at the tips of their tails. Rise Chews are just flat if they're female. Uh, so Rose Chew is a, a half hedgehog, half Raichu. Uh, but Chris always drew her tail with a flat end, which now, it, you, that used to just be every Raichu, but now that's only the male Raichus because the female ones have a heart at the end. Uh, so instead of Chris just retconning that and saying that his old drawings were wrong because he had no way of knowing that there would eventually be female raichu yeah uh he instead decided to retcon the story in an even worse way and say that during the issues where he drew her with a male tail uh that's because she was actually a male she was biologically male she had a penis and it was through uh magic and stuff that she is now female yep that makes way more sense. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. I'm understanding uh, A bunch that, of people really. got mad at him for this. A bunch of trans people actually got mad at him for this. <sighs> really? Of all the things to get mad at Chris for, this is the one to do? Why would people care? Chris Chan is fucking mentally incapable. Because uh, Rose Chu had never be shown aspects of being trans before. That sounds almost transphobic. Well, Rose Chu never showed aspects of being trans. It sounds like you're gatekeeping transgenderness. Uh, so they got offended about this? And Chris has, like, wavered on this back and forth. But currently the canon is that, yes, uh, Rose Chu was born male. Uh, guard dogs and watchdogs. Uh, so that refers to two different groups. The guard dogs were a group of Kiwi Farms members led by Noel, who is the owner and operator of the Kiwi Farms. Okay. And uh, they protected Chris against people like the Idea Guys. Uh, the watchdogs are a different group of Kiwi Farms users who protect Chris now because the guard dogs disbanded. Uh, there's some members in common, I'm sure. I don't know. Th these groups are very mysterious. Nobody really knows who's in them. Um, and Someone the, said something awful is about to come up in the, the video. Watchdogs protected Chris from people like Jacob Sockness and are currently protecting him from a group called the Praetors, who are the people who want Chris to tase himself. So they're really just down here because they're mysterious and nobody knows what they do or how much influence they really have or who they are because they're made on Kiwi Farms, which is anonymous. Uh, Leftovers Tonight is a... I would call it a podcast, but there was only ever one episode. It was a YouTube channel. Uh, this guy named Noah met up with Chris a couple times at conventions. He lived near enough to Chris that they could 
meet in real life a couple times. Okay. And he had a uh, podcast episode where he invited Chris and a local musician onto his show. And the whole thing was a joke on the musician. He wanted Chris to be crazy in front of him, say things like, oh, I'm I'm Sonic you and we're going to cross over in the dimensions. <laughs> and his goal was just to make the musician really uncomfortable. And he uh, streamed this on YouTube. A bunch of people called into the show and said like, hey, yo, man, get out of there while you still can. Chris is crazy. <laughs> and uh, he eventually, his channel got deleted from YouTube for violating some policy or another. I don't know. Interesting. But uh, yeah. Uh, we're now towards the bottom of the picture, like way, way down. Everything is dark here. You can see nothing. We are all the way into C-197, and we okay. have Yellow Skin Nightstar. Nervous. What is that? So uh, Chris has not only a Sonichu original character, but also a My Little Pony original character, whose name is Nightstar, okay. who also has autism and magical powers and... I remember watching a documentary when I was younger. Oh, not too much younger. It was about bronies, and uh, they followed a few different people. Every one of the bronies had autism. Well, I don't understand why people with autism like bron like My Little Pony or Pokemon a lot. It's weird to me. You saw that too? It's real. It's fucking... I don't understand it. I remember they were up at the... <laughs> They were up at the stage, and they started talking about My Little Pony fan fiction at a fucking convention for little girls. These dudes were up there, and they're like, hey, what about, like, the sexual tensions between the characters? And they're like, we're not talking about that. It's not real. Like, it was so embarrassing. They love Addison Ray too? Jesus. And also transform into a Sonic you, just like Chris can. And uh, that pony's name is Nightstar. But because Chris's universe and lore is extremely confusing, uh, Nightstar can become human. But there's also a, a, a fictional human version of Chris who lives in C-197 who can become a pony. Okay. Because if you go into Equestria, you become a pony. And if you go from Equestria to the real world, you become a human. So... What? That's weird. Oh. The fictional version of Chris meeting the pony version of Chris. If if they're both in Equestria, then they're both unicorns. And if they're both in the in Quickville, then they're both humans. Uh, and so they're identical and originally Nightstar was yellow, but then she turned pink for some reason. Her full name is Christine Knight Weston Star Chandler, I think. It's confusing. It's nonsense. Uh, Rose Shoes story. So there was a an artist who wrote a webcomic series uh, retelling the beginning of Sonic Shoe from Rose Shoes' perspective. The art is actually good. The storytelling is actually good. She stopped doing it halfway through, which is very unfortunate. She ended it on a cliffhanger. And Chris decided that he wanted to make this canon, so he redrew and rewrote this story in his own way and made everything worse. Okay, traced penis. Oh, dude, what? How do you how do you go from like a nice story of some other girl taking so uh, Sonic Chew and like redoing it in her own light to a fucking traced penis? There it is. This is the bad one. No. Uh, Chris drew a comic where he had sex with one of his fake troll girlfriends, and he drew himself. And then he drew an enormous penis coming off of himself, and the idea is that he probably traced it onto a real piece of paper, which is why it's so big. It's a, yeah. Uh, Trollsta's par- Wait, so the theory is that he took his human penis and traced it onto the comic. And so, proportionately, it was really big for them, but- it's actually a small penis. I, I feel like that's just got to be an assumption, right? Like, that can't be real. Paradise. So, Chris has released two albums. Not really, though. Uh, his band is called Christian and the Hedgehog Boys. and <sighs> Christian and the Hedgehog Boys. They do kind of like the Weird Al parody thing, but they'll take a real song and they just change the words. Chris mostly changes them to be about Sonic you things. Uh, but yeah. instead of re-recording the, the music album's or good. singing well, Chris will just play the song in the background and then sing over it, which largely makes him incomprehensible. Uh, so <laughs> Trollsta's Paradise is an album redoing oh a God. lot of Chris's songs, but in this guy's own style. It's a very grungy style, uh, so it doesn't keep the original tune whatsoever from the songs that Chris is parodying. But they are, you know, C Chris's lyrics. They're, they're Chris's lyrics put to real music. Okay. Uh, Wet Dream. So Chris... Nope. Chris joined a Nintendo forum, and he would post videos that he made in, I believe it was Flipnote Studio, uh, including one where he 
had a wet dream and he he was swimming in this this labyrinth that filled with water and then he met a mermaid and he had like a massive erection uh and he dude this fucking person is so horny all the time ended up getting banned from the website but not for not for that he got banned because he kept signing his videos with his real name christian weston chandler uh which is giving out personal information which was against nintendo's terms of service uh, head lovely woman is giving out personal I love you information which was against if only I knew who you are in reality that's got to be rough though man imagine like never getting fucking never having sex in your life bro like you would probably be tremendously down bad to the point where you just start making fucking weird porn comics about how you were sitting at a desk and just you just came randomly Nintendo's terms of service uh hedgehog sleep uh in real life Hedgehogs will pee where they sleep. I guess it's it's to cover no. their scent or it, it does something to their health. I don't know. Hedgehogs will sleep in their own urine. Uh, so because Christian is half hedgehog, somebody convinced him that he should no, purposefully pee in his own bed. And so for a long time, he did purposefully pee in his own bed and then sleep in it. Uh, Non-linear quick kill. So Chris has released several drawings. Or Bro, what? This guy, somebody convinced him to fucking piss the bed? What the fuck? Is it even true that hedgehogs pee and then sleep? Bro, what am I even asking this question? It's so irrelevant. These people trolled this kid into fucking pissing himself and then going to sleep. Quickville. Yeah, uh, Chris Chan is my 13th reason. In the Sonichu comics and on Twitter. And he, in this one image, he said that, oh, here's Sonichu's house, 10 miles away, here's the mall. And so people have commented that that would just make the city like one long line. It's as if the city, there, there's just one street going east to west and everything's either on one side of the street or the other based on this drawing. It's nice that there's a Walmart and a Target. <laughs> there's a Target, a Walmart, a jungle, and mountains. Those are two different things. A park, a city, uh, and then subdivi subdivision areas? What? Street going. Why is there a mall here? Why Why is... The, the fucking city is three miles from the mall? Two and a half miles from the mall? What the fuck? <laughs> Going east to west and everything's either on one side of the street or the other based on this drawing. And Chris has said that no, that's not the case. And he gets really triggered whenever anyone brings that up. The reason this is so low down on the list is because it's such a small detail in the whole history of Chris Chan that makes him so incredibly upset that it's just... Insane. Oh, that bothers when people pointed it out. And finally, we get to the bottom layer. This is the darkest of the dark. Uh, it's called a retconned because Chris kind of wants it retconned out of existence, or it's just so obscure that nobody knows about it. Okay. Uh, or at least used to. So uh, let's start with Mew Chu. Uh, Chris wrote a couple stories, just like written stories, like prose, before he wrote his comic books. And one of them was about the creation of all Pokemon. It's called uh, How Pokemon Came to Be in Their Pokeballs. And it's about uh, Mew Chu, uh, who is the god of all Pokemon. This was written in the 90s, long before Arceus existed. You know what's... So, <laughs> so I'm sitting here and I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, it's a, it's a Sonic Mew. Right? And we like, I, I, I was like, okay, of course. But then like you think about it for a second... And this shouldn't be Sonic and Mew. Mewchu means it should be Mew and Pikachu. <laughs> so he made a Sonic Chew, which is uh, Sonic and Pikachu put together. And then he just made it Mewchu, which is Sonic and Mew. All right. So Chris invented the god of all Pokemon, and that is Mewchu. And Isn't that like Artreus or something? I don't really know Pokemon that much. And it's unknown whether or not Mewtwo is still canon in Sonic 2 lore because he wrote this long before he wrote anything related to Sonic 2. I have a full video about this topic where I read the story, so that's somewhere on my channel. I'll okay. link it below. Uh, All-Star video. Uh, so this was, once again, a bunch of trolls. They got Chris to leak a sex tape, and uh, it started with him urinating on his bedroom floor off camera, and All-Star's playing, and he sings it, and he's just having sex with Magichan, which really just means he's humping a pillow. Fantastic. So, yeah, wow. it, it's it's all the way down here because nobody wants to see it. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, we have Rose Chu. People really chill the fuck out of this guy. There's other children. Uh, so in the same 
timeline in uh, the Sanju comics when there were giant ovens in camps in Quickville. Okay. Uh, Rose Chu and a couple of other uh, female Sonic Chus and Rose Chus got kidnapped and sent to this camp for labor. And when they were freed, they found out that the guards of the camp had been raping them and that they were pregnant and that they had eggs because Sonic Chu lay eggs because they're Pokemon. Uh, and so Rose Chu, who's the main female lead of the series and who's Sonic Chu's wife, and they have three kids together, uh, she laid more eggs and they, they had kids. And I think... Let me get this straight. <clears throat> This Chris Chan person created a comic book, creating like a fucking Hitler character that was a hero that put a bunch of people in camps and then had the guards rape them. Now, I understand that the, this person is definitely getting trolled, but how the f there's clearly, clearly a blurred line or like just an inappropriate lack or just a lack of understanding when it comes to just like sexual assault stuff because here's the thing and i'm speculating very heavily but like to me and i don't know how old this is but to me this suggests that like chris fantasizes about sexual assault because remember that i remember the comic book people were telling me that the the whole little like picture where he fingers that girl megan on the, on the thing and then he said something to her like i had to draw it to like or i would have like i had to draw it to like release stress or i would have felt like i would have had to do it right and then like then there's this and then he essayed his mother he raped his mom or sexually assaulted whatever you want to call it and i'm not saying that he wasn't encouraged because there's a lot of factors here but like the fact that there does seem to be um a very heavy emphasis on like taking sex by force is very 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 concerning um it's very very concerning this is fucking creepy dude this is fucking creepy. It shows that like he seems to have a desire to assault people or she, whatever. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? But that's a speculation. But I think Jesus, one of her, fuck. Uh, daughters was among them, and so uh, one of her daughters was also raped and had kids, and so that's just like, you know, the, the, that's the darkest thing that happened in Sonic Two. And Chris just writes it off in this series that he thinks is for children because he doesn't understand that this was a reference to like the Holocaust and that he was being fed nonsense from the Idea guys. So yeah. that's the end of the iceberg. And this was extremely depressing. Yes, uh, thank you for watching. My name is Gibby. You can follow me on Twitter at GIBI underscore Devin. Uh, please subscribe if you're interested in Chris Chan. I go over a lot more of the stuff he does in the present day. Gino Samuel is going through Chris's history and is trying to finish off the story. Uh, starting at the beginning, going to the present. I kind of started when I made my videos. I started in the present, and since then I've been pushing on. So I'm kind of keeping people up to date. My main series is a Chris Chan weekly update. So if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, you know, you, you want the minute details from, you know, every single week as opposed to a big overarching story. Yeah, this guy has a whole Christian more, account. It's uh, broad crazy. broad topics related to Chris, then you would want to subscribe it's to my nuts. channel. Please. Gross. Yeah, he does like a whole fucking Christian thing. Um... All right, very interesting. Um, that wasn't as bad as I was expecting, honest, but it was still pretty bad, so...